Hey, thanks for tuning in. The 148th Hasegawa Voyager Probe. By the box art, this is the original 2012 new tooling release. I'm a huge Voyager fan. I still tune in when they make an update. Star Trek The Motion Picture came out in 79. V'ger. Cosmos came out in 80. They sent back amazing photos. I stayed up all night waiting for scratchy updates when it was Neptune all night in 89 on PBS. Hasegawa kits are pretty good, and it was 26 bucks. On this edge, they show you the built model and the sprues. On this edge, information in Japanese and English. This came via U.S. Postal Service, and looks like Ace Ventura delivered it. In the box, you get a clear blue base with an earth etched in. The instructions. The information card, all in Japanese, but there's an app tool for that. Two black sprues. And a white sprue. The finished model is decent sized. You get a gold sprue with the disc and an alien giving us the bird. Hasegawa instructions are not very big. This is the information sheet. Page 1 and 2 of the instructions. Compact and busy. Last page of instruction. The mast and mounting. The master color callout. And more info on the record disc. Then I discovered Edward makes a photo etch set for the kit. This is going to elevate it, especially the masts. The sheet is flexible enough. I'll just anneal it if I have to. It tells you what the Hasegawa parts are. The new photo etch parts and the parts of the original kit you cut out. Let's jump in. Step 1 of the instructions and the photo etch instructions. That's covered with Mr. Color Gold with a pinch of aluminum in it. I've added that device to the center of the dish. The legs are three pieces that hold each other in when you add them. I covered the photo etch braces white and added them in place. The photo etch wires I painted in gloss black. Step 2 for the back of the dish. That hole is for the display stand wire. I went nuts at the end trying to figure out what I'd left off. Very snug fit. I didn't glue that in yet. Step 3. Now we put the bus together. And there's a bit of photo etch for this step. I tacked it at one point and then moved around it with CA glue. And the small rings. 
On the other side, the photo etch rim is in two parts. Step 4. This is the outward surface of the bus. Those legs point out. Goes in fine. Then I added the photo etch parts left over from step 3. For the most part, I had no issues with the photo etch pieces. I don't have specialized tools or steady hands. Some of the surfaces were treated. They had a matte copper finish. I left those as they are. Again, once added, they hold each other in place. Add that bit first, before you glue the legs in. What took 5 minutes should have been 5 seconds. The gaps were obvious. I'm starting with Mr. Surfacer 500 to fill the larger spaces. Then Mr. Surfacer 1000 to finish the seam. Step 5. Now you start the instruments, the masts, and the energy generator. First, the imaging suite and spectroscope. There were some photo etch for this step. The parts got small quick. One of two pieces I had to anneal. Grabbed a brush handle that fit the plastic piece best, then used it on the metal. The fit on that was so good, I just needed to press it down delicately to height. These wrap around the spectrometer housing. The gap was too much. This is Mr. Surfacer 1000. Step 6. This is the mast that holds the instruments. These masts were the decision makers on getting the photo etch. New attachment braces for the instruments. I used my bulk spruce nips to remove the unwanted bit. I attached one end where it goes and then wrapped and glued it around. Folded up fine. I should have painted the inside first. You cut the round sensor out and then attach that to the photo etch. The attachment bracket.
One thing about Hasegawa plastic, it doesn't clean up very smooth. I used the plastic one as a template to see where things attached. I covered it with Mr. Color Satin Black. Some of the small, special pieces I left shiny. This stuff is amazing. It gives a mirror finish. Apply it generously all at once, and then don't touch it again until dry. There's the mast all done. The swear jar got a significant deposit while I tried to get all that tiny photo etch to stay on. Step 7, the power source. Build it up now and add it later. Quite a bit of photo etch for this one. There's a metal replacement for the conductor rod there. Leave the stumps. These really elevated the final model. It's important that the holes line up. You connect it to the bus through them. Using a wire here to index it worked great. Making sure it's all good. I spent a lot of time trying to fold the photo etch one. In the end, the plastic part looked better, so I went with it. Step 8. You add a bunch of bits that sit between the bus and the dish. The new metal are these little boxes and this gizmo. Here's everything ready to go. I just need to paint the brackets and the panels silver. Step 9. Adding the frame now for the instrument mast, which I added later. This is the order I glued in the bracket pieces.
Step 10. Adding the frame to attach the long magnetometer mast. Somehow I lost the video, so let me show you what I did. I added the side pieces that have two attachments for the instrument. Then I added the bracket piece underneath. Then I attached it to the bus in this order. Step 11. The main mast assembly and final attachment of that and the RTG. It folds into a triangle nicely. There are two of these. The two halves made up in a way that makes for a strong join. You cut this off the original piece to join the mast to the probe. Also, the whole bus has been covered in Mr. Color Satin Black. That was fun. Here it is, ready for the antenna and the magnetometer mast. I saved these for last, and they actually cleaned up without breaking. They attach here. Here's the glamour shots. Needed to improvise a background. The finished probe is pretty wide. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be well and happy modeling.